tomorrow morning. And uh, here's the agenda. Uh, so the idea of, of this training session is to introduce Eclipse and why we are in this kind of project and what we can do for the project to help you open source your project and, and make sustainable after the end of the project. And uh, for that, we will cover several aspects. So I will in start with introduction to Eclipse for some people who might not know us uh, and some of our pillars and best practices. Uh, after that, uh, Ralph Miller, our uh, European manager, will uh, present the different uh, working groups that we have in Eclipse. Uh, and certainly we'll spend some time on some working groups uh, that might be interesting for our obstacle to follow up and even to participate. Uh, after lunch, uh, we will have a long session of two hours with Benjamin Kabe, which is our evangelist, and on the IoT uh, uh, parts, and he will introduce several projects that we have in this working group, uh, knowing that uh, Bosch is planning to use uh, some of these projects, so it's important for you guys to have an idea of what we're talking about and uh, why Bosch might be interested in validating some of these projects. And I will conclude the day uh, with the presentation of the Eclipse development process. So Eclipse is not only a, a, a forge, it's also a governance. And we will, I will describe some aspect of this governance to help you understand uh, why we'll need, we will, uh, the kind of interaction that you will have with the, with the foundation during the, the duration of the project. And tomorrow, uh, I will start presenting, a, okay, how you can build and what you, we should do to, to build a community, a sustainable community around the project. And then after that, we will have a session from Ralph again, who will present uh, open source licenses and more specifically the Eclipse public license to understand exactly what are the differences between different kind of open source licenses and what uh, it Eclipse uh, brings in terms of license. And uh, after the break, uh, we will cover uh, business models. So it's certainly interesting for uh, SMEs to understand if they are giving up their code, uh, how they can still make money and business uh, giving up their code or part of the code. So uh, Gail Blondel, who are the business dev manager in, in Europe, will explain the different models that we, we, we used to meet and to see in open source. And uh, Bosch with Stephen Everts will present the Bosch use case, which is pretty interesting because he went through different steps with Eclipse from being a simple login user to a strategic member uh, over the last 10 years. So it's very interesting to understand why they, they went through all these different steps and what what uh, open source brings to, to this kind of organization. And so we should finish uh, everything at, uh, at 1, 1 a.m. our time, so 12 for, 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 you, uh, for the rest of Europe. Um, I will try to stay hooked to the, this, uh, these time slots just because we have lots of remote uh, people. And like that, you will be sure that uh, everybody will not waste time waiting for his next, uh, in the next session. So I already started five minutes earlier, which is great uh, for, for us. So let's introduce Eclipse and Eclipse ecosystem. So I worked for this company actually only for, for 18 months, but I worked on Eclipse and with Eclipse for more than 15 years. I used to work for IBM uh, and uh, actually in around uh, 1888, uh, we had an IDE named Visual H for micro edition, which was already, was already the first Java IDE for embedded systems at this time. And around 2000, IBM came to this team and uh, asked them if we could support not only Java for embedded system, but Java EE, Java Enterprise. And then uh, they made some changes to be able to support that. And uh, the IDE uh, has been launched as an open source uh, solution named Eclipse. But the idea of these plugins 
uh, Eclipse is strongly based on this modularity and on plugins was originally for embedded system because we knew that uh, we will have to target different kind of devices. So we wanted to be able to support this flexibility and this modularity. So it's a strong heritage already. So it was this reason that Eclipse is pretty well adapted uh, to this kind of approach uh, as embedded system. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for years, for the first years, Eclipse was really considered as uh, the idea of IBM. Even if we had lots of other members involved in this ID, uh, it was still considered the, uh, the IBM ID. So for this reason, IBM launched a foundation in 2004 where IBM will have only one vote as anybody else in the board. So it was a strong, strong commitment to, to announce to everybody else that actually it's not IBM ID, but it's a really open ID that should be supported by all the strategic members. And because of that, we start pulling lots of different groups. And because of the modularity of Eclipse, we start pulling lots of different groups. And uh, these groups start building their vertical solution on top of Eclipse uh, ID. Nevertheless, they were a little bit frustrated because some of these groups, like, for example, for example, modeling tools group or, for example, science group, they had to support not only their their tools, their plugins, but also uh, menus coming from the core uh, ID. So they had to have also these uh, Java menus, these uh, uh, compilation menus, and so on. And they didn't want to have that. So they tried to push the community to to separate what should be really shared between the different uh, um, platform and what should be specific to each platform. And they launched in 2005 what we named the Rich Client Platform, which is really a core technology, and people could build on top of that their own solution. And by doing that, we start having more and more community joining Eclipse and with their own set of, of solution. Later on, uh, we start having not only developer joining Eclipse, but also consumers joining Eclipse. They wanted to be able to influence some of these projects, to be able to to give some directions. They like some of these plugins, they like some of these projects, they really wanted to push some of them, even to support some of them by maybe providing resources or providing uh, money to achieve some uh, few things. So we uh, created for this reason the notion of working groups, which is sort of virtual room where uh, we organized meeting between consumer and producers of plugins uh, to help people to talk to each other, to collaborate with each other, and we put in place some governance, some rules around that. We name it charter, where people define when they create a working group what they want to achieve and how they want to work with each other and the, the, the governance rules um, and so on. So based on this working group, we start creating the first one was the Science working group, open pass, re recent working group about uh, um, traffic uh, management and uh, car traffic management and open NVM. So all these working groups will be presented, or, and most of them will be presented to you by Ralph after after this uh, presentation. So no worries. And um, based on on these uh, working groups, uh, we start meeting. So Eclipse start meeting not only developers, as I said, but also uh, organizations and these organizations start asking us guys how can you do open source how are you doing open source because when we try to do open source it doesn't work so well we are not able to to really uh, gather and bring too many people to support our project our ideas and we start sharing with them our best practices so after a while they decided to invite us to some research project and for this reason that in 2013 we start working uh, in uh, with uh, Europe in European projects. So we created this subsidiary in in Europe, Eclipse Foundation Europe, to be able to be part of this European project. And uh, actually, we won the first project with Bosch, which was Amaltea for public. Uh, the project name in Eclipse is app for mc And then after that, in 2015, we were we we won two other projects and 216 for other projects. So we now we're trying to calm down because we <laughs> we don't have enough resources to manage all of, all of them after that. Um, 
So uh, I will I will list some of them. I will explain some of this project later on in my presentation. So as you can see, Eclipse is for us. It's mainly all about building communities. So don't expect for Eclipse to be. Uh, we have some technical guys. For example, this afternoon you will see. Uh, we will talk with Benjamin, who is our IoT evangelist. So it's technical guys. We have few technical guys, but mainly we have people who are in charge of making this kind of project live, managing infrastructure. So we have a team for, for the infrastructure. And, but the, our main role is to assist you in, in building this kind of collaboration, building this kind of communities, uh, and not building uh, software, even if some of us used to be a, uh, software architect or software developers like myself. So the community in terms of numbers, uh, uh, we, our committers are delivering more than 130 million lines of code per year. Uh, we have today more than 300 different projects and we have 1400 uh, developers and we name it them committers. Committers because uh, these guys are uh, actually um, approved to deliver some code to the repository. So, so it's not only people who can de deliver some code, they, they go through a meritocracy process that I will talk to you later, which uh, where people really are authorized to deliver some code. But which means that behind these 1400 people, you have even more people who participate to this project and are delivering some code, but they have to go through the Meters to be able to push the code into the repositories. And excuse me, go ahead. I have to interrupt. Uh, as they sharing, please not share. Philip is taking the lead. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, okay, so, and uh, we have something like 2 million uh, monthly visitors in the kit. So, strong visibility. So, it's something that we are trying to leverage in our research project as well to use this, this capability, this visibility that we have uh, with our community. Uh, the foundation by itself in terms of numbers, so we, we are dealing with an annual budget of around 5 million. Uh, this, this budget comes from the membership. So when, yes, we, we are pushing you to be a member of Eclipse, it's important for us. It pays my paycheck, maybe not because I've, I'm in a research project, but from, for some others, it's important for us. And, uh, and if you really believe that Eclipse can help you in making business, so it's important to be a member, not only consumers. Um, so we have today something like 260 members, not paying members, like academics and research centers. And we have also paying members, as including uh, 11 strategic members like Ericsson, uh, like Bosch and, and others that I will list later on. Uh, the staff is around 30 people. So as you, as you can imagine, we are these 30 people. We have a part of the team which is taking care of the infra. Another part is taking care of the admin. Third part is taking care of the IP, uh, biz dev, and so on. So we are very few. And we co-organize or organize uh, 50 different events per year where it could be a very good opportunity to talk about your project, if it makes sense. We personally <laughs> organize two EclipseCon events, and we participate to what we name it demo camps, which are uh, friendly events, local events, to, to, to be able to reach some local, uh, local group in different uh, uh, cities in Europe mainly. So here are the strategic members that we have, and as you can see, uh, we have big organizations, like Bosch, Ericsson, IBM, uh, SAP, Oracle, but we have also research centers like uh, CA, Tech, or even SMEs like OBEO. So why is this guys like like us and like or like working inside uh, the Eclipse Foundation? Because we are trying to do our best to make uh, a business friendly ecosystem. And the idea behind that is we are trying to, to sell the idea people that, guys, you should work together on a platform where you can mutualize your work. And then after that, you can compute, compete sorry, on, on product and services on top of this platform. 
So don't waste your time and try to share your resources for the common part, for the ET person in common, and just uh, compete on what makes a difference with your competitors. And actually, it's a message that more and more people are understanding because and only five doing R&D, I strong frustration when actually you could do the opposite, giving only five people doing maintenance and you share with other uh, organizations the maintenance of the platform and you can spend 15 of your guys doing uh, new products. It's definitely much better for, for your business. So what are the best practices that we are pushing in Cyclips? The first one is transparency. Uh, you will realize that everything we are uh, doing Eclipse is done transparently. Uh, even the process, the election of a new committer, submission of a new project, everything is transparent. Everybody knows what's going on in, in the foundation and can interact with you and ask you questions. So we will have a, a proposal and we'll have to ask questions uh, about uh, people will be able to ask questions about the project, and if it's not clear, they will, anybody can interact with you and ask you any question about that. Yes, Matthew? You are not sharing now. I'm not sharing anymore? Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, so I was talking about transparency. So first, first important pillar uh, for us is transparency. So be aware that it's transparent. So it's it's not easy for everybody to work transparently, uh, as you might know. For some of you already try to do open source, feeling that everybody can check your code, can read your code. People don't always feel comfortable with that, but you have to learn and don't feel bad. I mean, everybody went through this process and you have to learn to, to, to work that way. Openness. Openness is very important also for us. So if you have a competitor who wants to join your project, you have to accept them. You cannot reject them. And uh, there is several um, uh, ways to, to, to verify that actually uh, there is no project who will uh, push you push you out. Uh, if you have another project which is compete with your own project, uh, Eclipse will not push back as well. So we don't choose the winners, neither uh, are the losers. We just accept everybody. So you might have several projects talking about the same thing, and okay, fine, the the best will will win uh, if there is one best. Or sometimes it's uh, they, are, they are not competing anymore, and they are they try to work together. Meritocracy is very important, as I mentioned earlier. So you will not be able to bring somebody in your project in Eclipse just because it's a good friend of you. Uh, it's because he, he already shown uh, some contribution, important and interesting contribution for your project. And you will have to, quote unquote, prove it. Uh, so it means that uh, you will have, when you will have a committer el uh, election, so your project initially starts with some committers, but after a while, uh, when you have a committer election, uh, the process will ask you uh, to list the main contribution of this new committer and the other committers will have to vote for him. And uh, if the other committers are good friends of, of him, they can of course vote for him pretty easily. But even though at the end, the Eclipse uh, management organization will check and verify that if actually what you wrote in terms of contribution are value contribution to be considered as a, as a good contribution. So uh, it's important process. And for your information, recently on another project, I forgot to, to ask to some people to put me in their project as a committer. So I had to go through the committer process myself. And I had to prove, and we had to prove that even if I'm working for Eclipse, I had some good contribution to this project. So it was a very interesting process for me to, discover the full, full process myself. So be aware of that and it's important and it's a part of the value and it's a part of the recognition of the of the community because the community doesn't know uh, your friends but they, they certainly recognize uh, good contributions. 
Uh, we also have in place uh, different uh, pillars for open collaboration. So as we said, we have a governance to help uh, us doing good job and quality, quality job. We have an infrastructure. Uh, we have an IP management and licensing process, which is very strong and very appreciated by organizations, uh, which consists in going through your the code that you are delivering uh, and, and your initial contribution to verify that all the code that you are delivering is actually uh, clean and can be reused by anybody else and anybody else can make business with that. So we will re verify the copyright, we will verify the ownership. If the guy who uh, um, give up his code agreed to give up the code or if his organization agreed to give up the code. So all these things to, to be sure that if somebody else will grab the code later on, uh, it will not be uh, bothered by any uh, IP issue. Uh, we have a project and process in place also where we, we, we manage all these governance and all the development process that I will mention later on today. And, uh, and our core activity is about ecosystem development. So we have a bunch of different uh, channels where we are talking about this project. We have a mailing list reaching more than the, 160,000 of people uh, where we can, we know exactly if they were interested on this or that project. So it's very important for us to, 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 to use these kind of channels on when we want to talk about some of our projects. So don't hesitate if you think it can help you uh, to uh, suggest us to, to promote uh, your project or your or activity using this channel is part of our job. Uh, I will, we will talk during this, this session about many of these four, four aspects. We'll don't talk too much about the infrastructure uh, itself. Uh, even so, if you have some question, I might talk. I will certainly mention them when I will talk about the process, but uh, mainly we'll talk about four, four different aspects. Uh, I wanted to conclude this part uh, with uh, research at Eclipse. So, uh, as you know, uh, the European Commission is pushing people to do open source mainly because for sustainability reasons and for investment reasons, they want to really to see as many as possible people reusing uh, the project they, they put money on. So it's for, for them very important. And, uh, and it, it, it matched perfectly uh, with Eclipse vision of, of the open source. For, for Eclipse, open source is a catalyst. Uh, between large organizations, researchers, and SMEs. For, for us, large organizations are here to inject requirements. Researchers are here to make prototypes. And, and SMEs are here for industrialization of these prototypes. And why it's important to use open source is just because, uh, the, uh, large organization can, I mean, that researchers will not keep for themselves what they, they build, the prototypes they build, they have this, this part in common. And uh, SMEs, when they will start industrialization, if for any reason they have been bought by another organization, by a competitor on, on something, they will not be able to take the code with them and let you alone. So you will have, uh, you still have access to the, uh, to the source code and you will be able to ask, to, for example, another SME to take care of your code. So it's very important to have this, uh, kind of relationships, this fair relationship where everybody contributes to the same open source project. So, as I mentioned, we are participating in different projects. Uh, Amaltea one, it's about uh, multi-core system modeling, multi-core systems. So Bosch, uh, this uh, open source uh, model uh, to describe multi-core systems. And then around this uh, model, there are different uh, partners who are building tools on top of that. Uh, for modeling, for partitioning, for mapping, for code generation, and for simulation. Um, there is another one, the Agile, is about IoT, a gateway. And uh, it's, uh, they are building a modular gateway, a modularity in terms of protocol uh, devices, as well in terms of uh, cloud and application, directly application on the gateway. Um, Amas, it's a new project which started this, uh, um, yes, last year, sorry. Uh, it's uh, about uh, certification, modeling and certification. How do you model something and you can certify it's correct? Crossminer, it's another interesting project I'm involved in. Uh, it's about uh, how you identify sustainable open source projects 
uh, and uh, project that you can invest time or, or base your own work on top of that. So we have uh, uh, different uh, tools to, to gather metrics, not only metrics on on easy metrics on about how many uh, com commuters and uh, how many is your project is still in life, but also they are able to parse uh, forums, they are able to parse bug tracking system to see if your support is reactive or not, if your community, uh, how your community behaves, is it gently, they are, they are nice people to each other or they are uh, struggling when they ask some questions with the support, so it's a pretty interesting way of, of collecting metrics and, and showing them. So the idea behind that is to to provide a dashboard on uh, several uh, projects in Eclipse to, to, to provide this kind of measurements and metrics to uh, to understand uh, to understand the, the, the different projects. Rob Moses, uh, I will say that the core idea of this project is main, uh, it's mainly to try to uh, uh, regroup uh, people around robotics and uh, around certain vision of robotics. So it's a very interesting project as well. BASIS, it's about Industry 4.0. They are, want to build some standards around this uh, Industry 4.0. It's a German pro uh, project. So it's, if you are not talking German, you are a bit in trouble on this project. So it's, for this reason, Ralph is the only one who's taking care of that. Um, and of course, obstacle, and I will not talk about obstacle. Uh, uh, you, you know as much as I, I know at least. So I'm done with this part. So it's brief, brief coverage of what we have with, with Eclipse. We will dig a little bit more now on some aspect, and Ralph will start with the. Um, we'll go with the uh, working groups. Uh, next. Uh, So, do do you have any any question? No question. So, uh, so we we have to we will have to wait to let uh, Ralph. I will see when he's available. But I w I would like to try to keep the schedule. That up like that. If people just won't want to join, wanted to join for a Ralph presentation, they will be able to to, to reach it and that they will not show up when it will be finishing. Okay, so thank you, and we will be back in in uh, thirty minutes. Thank you.